Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is District Game Warden Corey Irk. We're going to talk about uh, basically what's legal and what is not legal as far as how many fish you can catch in a day, how many fish you can catch on a trip, and how to legally transport those. Corey, uh, first off, let's talk about the daily limit of walleye okay. or, or fish in general. Yeah, the daily limit would go from midnight to midnight and that would be the maximum number of fish that you could catch and keep during that 24-hour period. Right, but you can't carry more than your daily limit of fish in your live well, right? Right, not while you're actively engaged in fishing at any point. Right, one day's uh, catch. Explain, I know that this question has come up before some, if uh, you're fishing up till midnight, and you think you're gonna try and beat the law or whatever, uh, if you're gonna fish after midnight, and make it the next day's catch, but there are stipulations. Yes, you would need to take that first day's uh, fish, whether it was a full limit or not, um, take those and store those on shore, um, whether it was in your camper or, or whatever, and then you could go back out on the water. We hear a lot about the possession limits, of course. Give me a good definition of a possession Okay, limit. the possession limit would be the maximum number of fish that you could have in your possession at any point during a fishing trip. Say you went to Devil's Lake or up to Lake Sakakawea and were camping for, say, a week. Um, the possession limit would apply. Say, like, for walleyes, it would be a maximum of 10 now, uh, during any one trip. Right. Now, these are temporary residences. You mentioned campers and things like that or right. cabins. But the rule is different now for permanent residences in North Dakota. Right. Once you're at home or at your permanent residence, there is uh, no freezer storage limit on the amount of fish you can have. Right. Even though people can so-called stockpile fish, we don't really recommend that. Right. Obviously, we are about protecting the resource with game and fish and, and would ask that people, you know, basically take what, what they can use. Okay. So the lack of a freezer limit for people that have permanent residences in North Dakota, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean people that are, say, renting cabins for any length of time. Right. If you're uh, at, other than your permanent residence, the possession limit would apply. So if you're renting a cabin or, or you own your own cabin on the lake, um, the possession limit would apply while you're there. Corey, there's been a number of questions on fishing related websites lately about how to transport your fish. Uh, of course, you can't carry water in your live well anymore. How would you recommend people get their fish home from a trip like this. Right, you know, um, obviously using a fish cleaning station, which um, there are pl plenty of them around the different lakes and whatnot. Um, if there's not a fish cleaning station nearby, um, a lot of people are, are draining their live wells, putting their fish on ice in a cooler, transporting them home and then cleaning them once they get home or, or to a fish cleaning facility like this. If you're transporting fish from your lake home or cabin to your permanent residence, you want to make sure if you freeze those fish uh, that, they, that they're easily countable. Right. Um, they need to be frozen in a manner where if Let's you were stopped by a warden, um, the, number, the number of fillets in the package would be easy to count. Um, this is one example um, where you can see there's actually five pieces of fish in this package, so um, two and a half fish. Right. Would so be counted here. Right now, so vacuum packing like this is becoming pretty popular. It's a great way to store fish, but you want to make sure you do it flat. Right. Okay. Um, I noticed a question on a website the other day, Corey, that uh, a guy was concerned about uh, zipping or zippering fish. That, well, it's becoming popular. You take the mud line out of the middle. Well, that separates a walleye fillet or a fish into four pieces instead of two. Now you take that into consideration. That's legal. Yes, our wardens would would recognize that um, the two pieces would make one fillet. You can tell that the bottom rib portion versus the, the top of the fillet portion. All right, would you so, recommend they do it at home then? Or? I, it would probably be best to wait until they got home to do that. Um, it's just gonna simplify. If you do get stopped and checked, it's gonna simplify that counting process if they're not zip, but it's not, it's not gonna put you in violation. It's just gonna, um, make it a little easier to do the check and count the fish. Right. One thing we should make clear, Corey, and I think it's something that a lot of people don't understand, if you do freeze your fish like this in a great big ball, 
which is still very popular and people do it. If you can do it at home, you can store them in your freezer, but if you have to transport these for any reason, you could get in some hot water. This is definitely gonna be a, in violation um, for transportation because there is no way to easily count how many pieces of fish are in here. And that, that is uh, gonna be contrary to our regulation, which says the number of fish in each package needs to be easily countable. Right, so even though you may not plan on transporting fish somewhere, might come a time where you want to give some to your paper boy or someone like that, a landowner that uh, lets you hunt his land, but make sure that, uh, that you do it legally. Right. For transportation purposes, absolutely. All right. Corey, thanks. There will be more deer licenses available this year than last. The department is making 49,000 licenses available in the 2016 lottery, which is an increase of 5,725 licenses. Applications are now available for the lottery. You can apply online by logging onto the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. Follow the links, fill out the application, and pay the fee with a credit card. You can also fill out a paper application and send that in. Those are available at licensed vendors and other sporting goods outlets and should be available around mid-May. Or you can apply over the phone by calling 800-406-6409. The deadline to apply for the lottery is Wednesday, June 1st. The 2016 Firearms Deer Season opens November 4th at noon and continues through November 20th. For District Warden Corey Irk and the rest of the staff here at Game & Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.